Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Mushroom Revival Podcast. We are absolutely obsessed with the power of mushrooms. We are bridging the gap between you, our incredible listeners, and the beautiful, wonderful world of mushrooms. And we bring on guests and experts from all around the globe to geek out with us, shroom in to this wonderful world. Um, and so strap in, tune in, and shroom in to another episode. And today we have the lovely chef and mushroom lover, Sophia Rowe. We are so excited that she is choosing to spend some time with us and talk to us about why we should be so in love with fungi, mushrooms, all of the above. Sophia, thank you for joining us. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. It's so special. I love it. Highlight of my week. It is a special podcast. We're, we're inching up on about 100 guests by now. And I'm amazed that we have not run out of things to talk about. Yeah, and overall, I mean, kingdom, what do we know it. about mushrooms? We really don't know anything. So it's a, it's a crazy world out there. Yeah, we learn new things every day. It's the ultimate kingdom. It really is. It's a, it's a, or, or queendom, um, according to Juliana Forci, uh, which I think oh, yeah. is really special. I think that's very, very nice. I love that you love Juliana because she's our role model as well. She's the queen of mushrooms herself. And how did you, how did you get into mushrooms? Because I, I watch your stories. You're unbelievably passionate about the topic. And, I'm, and you're an incredible chef and, and all around an amazing person. But how did you get introduced? So fungus, moles, and spores. You know, I'm from Florida. It's a very humid environment. It's a swamp. There is a lot of mold and fungus and yeast and a lot of humidity there, a lot of moisture there, which is prime time um, for fungi. And as a little kid, I was alone a lot. Like I really spent most of my time alone. I remember there was this park, Gilbert Park. I was just fascinated by these little things. I, 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 they were like little friends to me. And it was also, you know, like I said, I was alone, so major imagination. So I've just always been fascinated with the way that they looked. Even this idea of food going bad, like mold, that's this idea that's like kind of gross. But I was always fascinated by it. Like, whoa, what's happening in my loaf of bread? Like it just kind of further supported my obsession with food. You know, this, and I think that we add a lot of um, good and bad to things. Like something's gone bad because it has mold on it. Um, the, the big umbrella for me is that fungus for me is a conversation about death. And I think that's why I'm so obsessed with it. Uh, to me, uh, fungus is proof that life exists after death. And I, while I don't, while none of us like really understand it, that's also how we feel about death. Like, we don't really understand it. And we're so scared of, of, we're so scared of death and we're so scared of something going bad or rot. You know, those are such negative things. And I just don't believe that they are. I really don't believe. I think you can find a lot of answers to a lot of questions that we actually have inside of death and inside of rot and inside of garbage. So, I mean, that's a long answer to your question. But ultimately, my fascination started when I was a very young person, very little girl. I think this is one of the more charming mushroom love stories I've ever heard. Just picturing <laughs> this adorable little girl looking at a moldy sandwich and thinking, wow, there's some wisdom here. That's so awesome. And we need more people like you, right? Because that's how penicillin was invented, right? Or, or found was through this fascination with mold and sending people all around the world to look at moldy melons and, and breads and things like that to save hundreds of millions of people's lives. It's through this this exploration of death that we find life and and life-saving solutions to a lot of our world's problems and that's awesome. You know, um we're obsessed with cordyceps and it's it's this fungus that attacks insects, right? And so bugs are ready. People are like, ew, like, and then fungus, ew, and then a fungus yep. that attacks insects takes over their body and it's kind of turns in, into a zombie. Is for most people this, what are you talking about? That is the <laughs> grossest thing on the planet. But for us, it's like, that is so weird and cool. And that exists in nature like that we shouldn't shy away right from what exists in nature and most of the 
a lot of the beautiful, most beautiful things in nature are ones that people shy away from, right? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> people like to think nature is, is sunshine rainbows, right? Uh, Mother Earth is all loving and, and beautiful, and but there's this other aspect that a lot of people don't like to look at, which is with death, right? And it's the second most important day of our lives. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's wonderful. That's a great way of putting it. It really is. I think that people don't realize, you know, if, if not for fungi, if not for these things, then, then the world would just, there'd be dead stuff everywhere. So I think we need to start looking at, I think we just need to start looking at the symbols of fungi differently. You know, I think we need to start looking at rot differently, you know, and I, th I feel like the same thing goes into play when we talk about race. I understand this is not that conversation, but like this idea that white is pure and black is dirty, right? Like we learned those kind of concepts pretty young. And I feel like fungus ties into that conversation about death. And when, when we're having these these thoughts about some death, it's so bad. Everything is so negative, you know, and we don't, we need to start looking at fungi as a regenerative tool, you know, or, or more symbiotic, right? Like there's fungus all over us. There's mold all over, like we're, we're, I don't know why we think we're these, like, it's funny, this one girl on Instagram was like, I just can't get over that I'm eating fungus. And I'm like, baby girl, you need it to survive, honey. Like you think you just don't have, like, you know, like your microbiome exists on your, you have bacteria all over your body. You know, so it's so interesting, this idea of like cleanliness and there's also even like sort of this, uh, some people find it to be negative, sort of the phallic symbol of a mushroom, you know, so it's also got that sort of negative connotation there as well. So I just feel like it's really misunderstood, right? Like people, people also think fun, fungi are only mushrooms, right? They're mushrooms are just the fruiting body. So like, there's just some things where just people are just not really clear. It's a big mysterious kingdom to a lot of people. Which is a part of the reason why I also, again, supports my fascination. Thanks for making it sexy, you know, with your platform. And mm -hmm. I, I, seriously, it's it's so important to have those conversations and meet people where they're at and kind of bridge that gap and open people's minds up to, you know, and it's more more than the conversation around mushrooms and fungi, right? It, it weaves, it's intersectional with race and, and, and every single concept on the planet it's all interconnected right and so the more that we have these conversations it opens up other uncomfortable topics that we can talk about and make people say oh you know i never never thought about it like that way you know and yeah yeah actually the, that you are right you know and and uh yeah it and i feel like mushrooms can be that building block um, and we're starting to see it change in the U.S. Not not every country around the world is mycophobic, right? Um, you know, China, for example, is 5,000 years of his rich, rich history of using mushrooms for food, uh, functional ingredients, etc. But um, here in the U.S., it's we we have to have more people like you, you know, and uh, having these conversations, making mushrooms sexy, uh, using them in foods and cooking and in functional ingredients, uh, building materials, X, Y, Z, saying, wow, these, this queendom is awesome. And we can partner with these fungi, with these mushrooms and do some cool stuff. Yes, we certainly can. I mean, we must. Like, I just feel like we could, there's so much to learn. You know, I want to be more like fungi every day, you know, and I just think that, that there's this idea of connection too with fungus that I think we as humans don't feel like we are, are connected in a lot of times, you know, we're in our houses, we're doing our thing. I'm like, no, you are absolutely impacted by your surroundings. 1000%. And I always give that example. Like if you're at the, if you're at a red light and the light turns green and you don't go, that person behind you is going to honk. You have just impacted that person's day, right? Later on when they're at home, they're going to remember in this, in the scheme of their day. Oh yeah, this person, they didn't go. I honked my horn. I, I did an action because of something um, that, that someone else did, right? We don't realize how interconnected that we really are. And that e maybe even more has been exacerbated with the pandemic. I think we're, we're really just becoming even more closed, even more like I don't need other people. I'm not impacted by other things. And I just, that is so not true. And we actually do need each other. It's like the, the primo thing that I think 
uh, big umbrella thing we can learn from fungi. Like we really, really do need each other and we all truly are connected, 1000%. Hey guys. If you love the show and want to continue getting tantalizing mushroom content such as this, please consider supporting us by going to mushroomrevival.com and purchasing one of our amazing mushroom products. This is how we keep the lights on. This is a total passion project. We do not offer any outside uh, advertisers and this has totally revolutionized our health. We want to spread the mushrooms far and wide in every corner possible. If you're listening to this, we will offer you a special coupon code that we're not offering anybody else. If you're listening to this, this is a little Easter egg that you just found. The coupon code is called POD TREAT, P O D T R E A T, all caps. No and spaces. to figure out how much you actually save, you got to figure it out. You got to open that Easter egg as well and put it into your cart to find out a special offering that only you will get. So when you go watch a movie, you get a bowl of popcorn, obviously. So when you listen to mushroom podcasts, you get a mushroom tincture pumping through your veins, pumping through your eardrums. You mm -hmm. are a mushroom. <laughs> Help the mushroom revival. We love you guys so much. Back to the show. I just read something really quick just before I came on and uh, the post said, we need to change the phrase self-love to community love right and some people need self love right and and uh but other people are confusing self love with community love and what they really need is that that loving community right um and they're trying so hard for self love but they end up isolating and it makes the problem worse so um yeah that's a really good point i mean I, well the point of self love is so that you can then go back to the collective and i talk about this all the time like even when we're looking at indigenous cultures you know the whole idea of taking care of yourself isn't so that now you're just walking around as this solo individual unit of someone who's taking care of themselves it's so that you can also better take care of the collective as a whole right it's the, the, that the mycelium of it all <laughs> you know like the undergut of it all is that we all are taking care of each other singularly so that we are a stronger unit together you know, and that's also the intuition of it all, which is another thing that I think fun, fungi really have, you know, they're really tuned into that, their intuition, you know, when you understand yourself, you're more likely to also like understand yourself and what yourself needs. You're more likely to also understand what other people might need. You know, equity is at top of mind, you know, because you're putting that important for yourself. So again, I can't stress it enough. Like the, the conversation about mushrooms or fungi is so not linear. And I think that that's the thing I'm always trying to push. Like it is a sexy conversation because it's rich. It's a very rich conversation. I think one of the most important lessons so far in the 21st century is how crucial biodiversity is for health. I mean, like your gut, oh, you know, we're not alone. More of our weight is, is bacterial. It's not even us, it's not our DNA. Yet if we didn't have that, we would be dead in the water. And that's true for everything, like the health of our ear cavities and our mouths and our teeth. And like, it's just infinite. We have, like microbiologists are continuing to find out the more diversity, the better. It's checks and balances. And this is, I kind of learned this convoluted from cultivating mushrooms because as a cultivator, you're trying to isolate, right? You need to get that strain of mushroom on a Petri plate and nothing else that you have to eliminate the competitors. And that works, right? Like we, we can grow some of these mushrooms, but most of the mushrooms you see, we have no freaking idea how to grow. We cannot take that from mother nature and put it into our own conditions and propagate. We just can't do it. And it's probably because, I mean, it's definitely because of the complexities there. There's yeah. relationships with the trees and the bugs and the plants. And we are so, so far behind from understanding how the hell you get an amanita mushroom to fruit, for example and like oh how that gosh. affects its chemistry. Yep, yep, temperature, I mean, air quality. I mean, there's just so many factors. And again, I, I think that goes into this idea when we're looking at ourselves and really understanding like, I, I wanna be like that. Like, I wanna be not able to be replicated. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I wanna, be, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I wanna be, so that's, so I, I guess it's like, it's really, I guess my fascination for mushrooms, it's. It's big umbrella because it's 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 really childlike, 
you know? And I think that's another thing we, that us as adults, we need to remember to be, you know? Um, I, I, I really want to change the world one day and I, I say it all the time, like I don't believe you can do that without being tapped into your imagination. And um, at this point in 2021, to be revolutionary, you have to be tapped into your imagination. And I just, like, what an incredible thing for there to just be something that is just impossible to be replicated. We're humans, we're these smart, able people and we can't do it. Like, I am fascinated by that idea of, of just nature. It just does what the heck it wants to do. And that is the, the most, that triggers my imagination like nothing else. Like, wow, just completely feral, completely unbound, you know, completely, and, 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 and nature feels worthy of that, right? Nature will show up and show out this is what i'm doing i'm growing this today i don't care if you don't understand oh you didn't want it to rain so what <laughs> like it's amazing i just think it's amazing how how has your own experiments with i i see you getting a bunch of mushroom kits and growing your own mushrooms how has that experience been i mean great i don't know if, if i just have really good house or if i'm just i don't know what's happening but for a while, I was like, a, I was a full blown mushroom farmer in this house. Like I had mushrooms growing everywhere. Uh, so it's a, it's, I think it's a fun experience for me because as a chef, I eat a lot of mushrooms. So while we can have massive conversations about like all kinds of fungi and all kinds of different varietals of all kinds of different things, I, I'm really obsessed with mold, to be honest. Mold is probably. I, I can't. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I should say that if I disappoint people. But of all of the. <laughs> things in, in, in kingdoms, like I'm a big mold person. Um, but uh, I eat mushrooms almost every day. So cooking, or excuse me, growing them in my own house was also just kind of like saving me some money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite to grow and or eat? I'm really in an oyster, um, oyster mushroom kick right now. They grow really, really well in my house. And some of my favorites for a quick saute, uh, so that's, yeah, I love chanterelles. Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we're doing, if I'm going to make something for someone and I'm like, okay, we're going to show out, it's going to be a morel moment. We're using morels. We're really going there. Um, but there's really no bad mushroom. I don't, I don't, I, and I'll eat them raw. Like I don't have feelings about raw cooked as a chef. I'll eat them. However, like I'm like a roulade, whatever you want. Like it's for people that don't like mushrooms. I always just say, oh, it's just cause I've never made them for you. It's fine. I'll help you. <laughs> Going back to the mold, is it just because that was the first kind of fungus that caught your attention and it's it's maybe like a meditative practice for you just contemplating death and decay and reversing that identity of it? Or is it totally something else? Um, is it just the cool green colors or, or something like that? or? I think so, you know, like the food stylist in me vibes really just appreciates the look of it. I, but I also just, I, I don't know, I always go back to this, like, what is, what is something that's gone bad? What is that? Why has it gone bad? Gone bad for who? Like, it's not gone bad for the mold. I, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I, I always go back to that. I'm like, oh yeah, the bread is bad. Is it bad? It looks per perfectly good bread for the malt. Like, this is perfect. It goes back to my, again, my fascination with fungi is bigger. My fascination with garbage, trash. I love trash. You know, I love garbage. I love my favorite thing. Like, I get flowers, you know. My favorite thing is to just let them sit and just die and just leave them there. You know, this. I think death is really a beautiful, beautiful thing that we have to start repurposing and reframing. I'm not saying that as humans, we aren't sad and there's not sorrow, absolutely. But nature is showing us in front of our eyes that something happens after you die that can be amazing and remarkable and special. And uh, I, I don't know, it's just something about mold. <laughs> I don't know. Something about that whole bad word. I, I don't know, it's interesting to me. Have you seen the uh, the TED talk about the mushroom death suit, the bur of burial suit? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Would I you do that? Of course I would. Of course I would. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I like, will do that. Conversation. <laughs> yeah. What do I care what happens? Also, like, what, what do I? What do I have feelings? I mean, like, I also think. That, I mean, it's very personal. How you handle death is very. There's a lot of ceremony around it. You know, I didn't have a really great childhood, so you know, I'm not connected with my family. So 
I actually don't really have feelings about my body after I die. And so that sort of dedicating my body to science is something I am a hundred percent. I absolutely will do. It's so important to me. Uh, and to help those who are alive still. And also too, like, I don't know, fungi makes me feel so differently about this idea of even being alive. Like who's to say I'm actually dead when I'm dead. You know, I'm alive to something, you know, I don't know. Again, this is, this is my fascination with that life and death conversation is really wrapped up in mushroom and fungus. And I think we can geek out like, uh, you know, Tremella, you know, Fusiformis. That's my favorite mushroom. I love jelly yeah. mushrooms. Oh, it's my favorite. I love them. We can geek so, out hard. But like, I, I do think that in an effort to make this sexy and to get just the lay person, a, a regular person excited about mushrooms, you got to make the conversation bigger. And so too clinical is a little like, oh, I already feel weird about mushrooms. Don't go too clinical. So I, 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 I don't like to go that clinical, even though I can because I just want people to be excited about growing things. You know, I get tagged in, at this point, hundreds of people buying their own mushroom kits because I'm recommending them. And that That's is just, awesome. that is just, I mean, I get emotional thinking about it. It's just the most remarkable thing for people to really be like, wow, look at what I'm growing. And you see their pride in it. They're so excited about it and trying it out. And I don't like mushrooms, but my mom does. And look, I made these and kids love it. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> right they love it they get so excited about it and so i just i keep it there and then put in little tidbits here and there about how magical this really is you you made a comment earlier that one day you hope to change the world and there's this awesome scene i don't know if you've seen it the movie soul where um he basically gets this jazz gig and they're outside afterwards and he's like wow i've dreamed about how, getting that gig and now it doesn't really feel that special and uh the woman says to him well there's a story of two fish and one fish says i'm looking for the ocean uh and the other fish says well the, you're in it and he's like no this is water i'm looking for the ocean <laughs> and uh and he he goes off swimming and um yeah, I, I think you're already changing the world. I think you, every day, I mean, from getting people, hundreds of people to buy their own kits, to grow their own food, to empower themselves, to connect with the bigger aspects of what does fungi even mean? What do mushrooms even mean, right? Mm -hmm. That's changing the world. And through cooking, through, um, I mean, you're involved with a bunch of different organizations with uh, helping homelessness and and. Mm -hmm. uh, other people growing their food in inner cities and things like that. I mean, you're doing incredible work. So oh, I thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, that's so special. I mean, listen, it's a you know, I, I it's pick your thing and make it your thing. And I this this is my thing, <laughs> you know. And I I think um, the bigger message is that idea that. Yes, it's really great. You get the mushroom kit and you're harvesting your own mushrooms. It's great. You cultivation and you're learning. But like, oh my God, I'm actually making food in my house. And you see this moment that it clicks with people too. Like I to be able to watch that on Instagram where I say, I ask them, okay, like, what are you going to do with your beautiful pink oyster mushrooms now? And they're like, oh my God. Oh yeah. What the heck am I going to do? Like, you know, the excitement around it, you know, and then the specialness of it. Like, I grew these. I have to do something very special. And then there's a ping. I always remind people, like, you know, that same very that very same thinking can be applied to anything you get at the grocery store. Because something you get at the grocery store was also grown and just as magical, right? We don't live in an agrarian place anymore. So we are already, because of all of the things, right, that the, the, we don't see our food being grown. We don't actually understand the farmer. What is a farmer? Right. Like we don't we're not tethered to those things like we used to be. And so I think this idea of a mushroom kit is so nice because it really reminds you of the work it takes. You got to take care of this stuff. You got to make sure it's moist. You got to make sure it's in the right area. You got to make sure it doesn't get direct sunlight. It's like a pet. You have to take care of it, you know, mm -hmm. and that's really special. It is. And I love your content for many reasons and recently indulged in some counter space episodes, which were it was like a cooking show and a vice documentary hybrid. It was amazing. You give a, a history and you talk about the supply chain of whatever commodity you're currently working with. 
And that to me highlights your attention to the journey of all the things that you're using in your life. So thank you for building that conversation around consumerism. And obviously I watched the mushroom episode with Juliana Fritchie. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about this and like maybe some things that you learned from just doing some investigation. Okay, so I, we were shooting really high to be able to speak with her. I mean, that was like, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, there's no way. She's in, she's in Chile. It's like, it's just, it's like, I'm in New York. It's like, it's stupid. And uh, Maggie, my segment producer came back and was like, no, like this is who we're going to interview. And I was like, okay, well, wow, I'm going to cry. You know, you're like, oh, you have someone's like keynote, like memorized. That's pretty, that's like, <laughs> you're like you're, you know, it's like so intense. So I was extremely nervous, but she's just so kind. And so I, mean, I was, I, even that interview, I was like, I didn't know. And I watch it, I watch it back and I'm like cringing because I am, you can just, I know I'm so nervous when I'm talking to her because she's just meant so much. She means a lot to me just as a woman in this field uh, as well. And to be the first mycologist in her country and what she's done, which is not just the Fungi Foundation, which by the way, if you don't know about the Fungal Foundation, you got to go into it, donate, support, support. Um, but I think that what I sort of investigated in my, in my investigative work, it was her thinking was exactly like mine. It was a bigger conversation, sort of, uh, I want mushrooms to have a better reputation, right? It was what we were, we were both very much looking at it in the same way from your reputation's perspective. Like, yeah, let's get super clinical, but like also that's not going to get the Gen Z excited. And we need them excited. And also, I'm thinking future farming. I'm thinking there's, there are, there are potentially funguses, molds, things that eat plastic, right? When we're having these climate change conversations, a lot of us are just kind of talking to ourselves in circles. We're not actually talking about what we can do. Aquaponics, hydroponics, right? Precision farming. We're not actually talking about regenerating, regenerating topsoil and what that can look like and how, how, uh, fungal practices can be beneficial there. And so for me, it was really like, that's the angle I want to come from because that's what young people are excited about. I'm very grateful to live in a time where there are young people very excited about climate change. So I want to, in my millennial mind, because I'm not a Gen Zer, I want to arm them with actual knowledge. Like these are the things that can actually help combat climate change. And Fungal research, it, it's just, it, we need more. It's more, 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 more. I appreciate that we have like, we're spending billions of dollars on fake meat. I appreciate that. But if we can spend billions of dollars on creating fake meat, then we can also spend billions of dollars on this research because I believe that it is just one of the single most important things that's going to help us in the near future. Not, not 50 years from now, but like now, like five years from now. And that is what we really, I learned so much of in my investigation um, and having so many conversations with Miss Forchi. She's, she's like the mother of the uh, fungal kingdom. I look up to her as kind of like a second mother it, in the mushroom scene. It's, she uh. just holds people in this be really beautiful way and welcomes everyone. No ego, no, like nothing. It's just no. all for the love of fungi, all for the love of people loving no. fungi and all about making mushroom sexy, accessible, yep. and relatable, and emp empowering fungi, right? Um, yes. So that it's amazing, and I would have to mimic what you're saying. Of you know, Paul Stamets is is a good influencer for a lot of people just getting into mushrooms, and yep. it's starting to change. More and more people are starting to become that influencer, like Juliana. And when I was coming into the scene, it was wait, the mushrooms can can degrade oil, they can yes. degrade plastic, they can yep. uh, become this protein rich food, they can um, hold, mm -hmm. you know, 70% of carbon in our soils, they can, you Amazing. know, and it went on and on and on and on. And I'm still on a daily basis, like, wait, what? Fungi can do that? <laughs> <laughs> it's and, amazing. It's yeah. truly remarkable. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. But if our issue is garbage and waste, is that not that's why that's why we have this kingdom 
like i'm sorry but like the planet doesn't make mistakes you know what i mean like we like we're ignoring the one thing that was put here by who we don't know which is another thing that's very fascinating we have no idea why this alien amazing thing that is fungus is here but it was put here and can handle all of these things that all sound to me like they're all of this is for them. Like they, they are here and available for the job. They're here for that. So like, let's do it. They're ready. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. And that was the thing I spoke with her a lot. Just sort of how she's like a lot of, she said something to me, like a lot of the things that are problems don't have to be problems. We have the solutions here, you know? And I'm like, yeah, like even for me and hunger, I don't believe hunger should have to be a problem. It really does not have to be a problem. You know, we just have to go about looking at it differently. You know, and so, yes. Fungi have a lot of the solutions because they're so resilient, right? And they mm -hmm. pop up in every nook and cranny of the earth and, and possibly beyond, right? Uh, in other solar systems and things like that. But we find them in Antarctica, you know, yeah. in the ice. They're just Crazy. hanging out in the ice. And, yeah. you know, underneath the Pacific Ocean, there's dozens and dozens of different fungi you know, in our mouths, on our skin, they're in Chernobyl only consuming yeah. radioactive waste. I mean, there's, yeah. they pop up in every single way and they've been even thrown out of this, of a space station and survived the vacuum of space for six months, brought back on board, they're fine. You know, they are remarkable in the way that they just persevere, right? And anything life throws at them they're like, oh yeah, okay, I'll adapt. And that is huge. Uh, I was in a talk yesterday um, all about adaptogens. And, you know, it's funny the, the way we use fungi and the way we look up to fungi and the way um, we learn so much is the way that they can adapt, right, mm -hmm. to these extreme environments. And they're like, yeah, whatever. This is cool. I'm yeah. hanging out in a lava pit, you know, like, yep. and, and I'm, I'm chewing on plastic. No worries. Just throw a whole landfill at me. Mm. I gotcha. I, it yeah. might take me a million years to develop the enzymes to, you know, uh, to right. degrade this, but I got it. What's time? And yeah. Yeah. With time. And I got plenty of that. I survived yeah. all the mass extinctions. I'm good. Yeah. I've been mm -hmm. on planet earth for a billion years and no creating symbiosis with other organisms for the last 700 million years you know i'm mm -hmm. we're good <laughs> literally no sweat no and I, that's that's another is another thing too that's like i want to be just like that we can learn so much from them this this like what is time you know and i say it all and i always say it i always say it listen time is very real when you're baking a cake i don't want to like i'm not trying to i mean you know i don't want to go super space we can however um but i i just mean like this idea of rushing and again the dead alive good bad what like what you know what does that really mean being alive what does that mean you know and if i i, mean, I just feel like if if i'm live enough for for fungus then like i'm then i'm alive you know so i i the the sort of magic for me is has to be this idea of resilience has to be this sort of i'm unfazed i'm unfettered by all this other stuff that's going on i'm existing you do what you do i'm doing what i'm doing like that's fungus like fungus literally minds her business you know what i'm saying like she does exactly what she wants to do where she wants to do it when she wants to do it and how she wants to do it and she really doesn't care how you feel about it or how long it takes it's amazing She's yeah, sexy. She knows that best. is a sexy woman, you know. So so sexy. Yes, couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. So, what mushroom do you have tattooed on your arm? Oh my god! I wonder if we can find it. Oh, who knows? That who was knows? such a cute uh, oh, portion of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that she had it, so it was like so. I, just, I also I, was like, oh. I have a spore print. No mushroom, oh, but it, just the spores. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. It was like very real and I didn't realize they were going to leave it in. So you're seeing this like <gasps> moment where I'm like, oh my God, like she had what I was. Like this thing and you know, it was, it, yeah, it was a very sweet thing. And now, now we WhatsApp. Oh, 
so I'm like awesome. me and Juliana on WhatsApp, it's like the cutest thing. She's just like, oh, like here's here's this amazing I, this puff ball thinking of you. Oh. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh like, god. oh my god. I know. We have like a very sweet, a very sweet thing. And I I also think now too, it's like thinking I have this. I have a really wonderful friend and she's like, come to Chile. And I'm like, oh my God, the pandemic, but I'll be there. I'm literally coming. <laughs> so mm-hmm. if I show up at your door, like, but I also think too, another really fascinating thing for me um, to segue a little bit, especially since I want to talk about my favorite mushrooms, like white jelly mushrooms. I love, I love, love jelly fungi so much, um, but it's multiple uses. So many uses um, at, different from when they're dry. You see a lot of skincare starting to understand white jelly mushrooms and the benefits there, which I think is really, really nice. Their ability to hold water. I think scientifically we need to figure that out. That's a very fascinating thing to me. I'm really, really into this future of like the jelly mushroom. How do you feel about jelly mushrooms? Are you a jelly mushroom fan? Oh, that's your favorite mushroom, right? That's one of my favorites, Tramella. It is. Oh, I just, I love that you're saying this. It's truly my favorite. It's really my favorite species. Oh, I love we, them. We actually have it in our daily 10 tincture, which we're going to send you. Uh, it's one of our mushrooms that we work with. And oh. what's cool is that you were talking about, you know, the whole isolating a single fungus to grow, right? Yes, and yes. Tremella is two different types of fungi coming right. together. And mm-hmm. so it took so long to figure out how to grow it. And then a farmer was like, you know, uh, oh, we have to combine these two different fungi mm-hmm. um, and able to to grow uh, this mushroom. And that's just fascinating of just, you know, instead of this monoculture, it's it's permaculture. It's it's coming together. It's multiple species in, in symbiosis, which is incredible. So, oh, so Tramella is awesome. Yeah, it's my favorite. I love that you love. I assumed so, but you know, when we're thinking about my favorite, I'm like, oh, that's, and a lot of people don't really too, very, very edible soups, vegetables, all, you know, so, which is also great. Very multi-use as well. I love jellies, especially cat's oh. tongue. I don't know if you found oh. this one. Do you remember it? I haven't I found. It's so weird. But what it a is... funky looking one. Let's oh get a my, picture Oh my, it is up. so fun to touch. Yeah. It literally feels like a cat's tongue, like inflated with Whoa, pudding. Yes. It's, what a yeah. funny It one. has all these little, like, hairs on yep. it. Oh, my God. It's Yeah, it even looks like a tongue. It's it's really awesome. Um, oh, my another gosh. Another one... It does. <laughs> is, ...is wood ear, which yep. feels like an ear. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> even looks like it a lot of times, and it's such an incredible dish uh, in vinegar. Oh, my God. Delicious. I'm obsessed with, with vinegar-soaked uh, wood ear. That is one of my favorite dishes of all time. Um, and going back to texture, it's this trend right now I'm seeing on TikTok of just like boinging mushrooms. <laughs> what? I don't know if you. Oh, are the pat and like they pat on them, and like it's a little suggestive and very sexual, and I'm very down. I'm very supportive. I love it. I love it. Or the um, I I've seen, I saw one video talking about wood ear. I saw one where there's like the water driplets. Where like there's water droplets and the guy's like hitting it and it's the water and you're like what am I watching? <laughs> yeah, you feel like weirdly guilty about. <laughs> yes, you're like this is not this is definitely is this PG? Is it? I know it's just a mushroom, but is it? Speaking of woodier though, uh, if you're in New York, you can always get them from Italy. You can always get them. They are always there um, if you want some, and uh, it, all the vinegar is soaked. Woodiers that you can possibly imagine over there at Italy on 27th Street and Broadway. So, awesome. anyone's wondering. Going back to cooking, because most people say they, or I say a lot of people in the U.S. say they don't like mushrooms. And I think what you said is because I haven't cooked them for you yet, right? And I think people just don't know how to cook them or they're eating the wrong mushroom, right? I'm I'm not really a fan of button mushrooms or portobellos. Um for the most part, they have to be cooked the right way. There's other mushrooms that you can you can maybe mess up a little bit and, and it's a little more lenient, right? But button mushrooms is really easy to mess up. Um, so for people at home that maybe are new to mushrooms or new to cooking mushrooms, the pandemic really 
uh, turn the gear up on home cooking. So how, what would you recommend for people to start? What is a good mushroom to start with and maybe a good recipe of how to cook mushrooms? Okay. So first things first, I think it's an accessible conversation, right? Like I, I always start with what's most accessible, like a white button mushroom is going to be your most, your most accessible mushroom. They're, they're going to be most of the time you're going to be everywhere. So I think it's important to take stock in what exactly texture and taste you are looking for, you know? And so what, what do you imagine a mushroom to taste like, or why do you think you don't like it? Is it the, is it soggy when you've had it? And so that's why, so you're looking for some crunch, right? That's going to be, uh, you can able to get that on stovetop. You can able to get that when you roast. I think it's about right temperature. Uh, I also think that when we get mushrooms home, I see people do crazy things like wash them in water, like submerge them in water. Please don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, just wipe them down. Just give them a little wipe. It's fine. And people say, yeah, but mushrooms, oh, they, they grow in dirt. And I say, boo-boo, a lot of food grows in dirt. It's all going to work out. So much food grows in dirt. So much food grows in poop. And we work it out. So you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all going to work out. So I tell people, wipe them down really, really nice. Get your pan medium heat. Throw them in the pan. Oil, little oil, not some crazy oil, not fourth a cup of oil, just a teeny bit of oil. Leave them be, let them do their thing. They're gonna release water, especially once you salt them. So after you salt them, you'll see the water release. I think we fiddle too much. I think this is the case, not just for mushrooms, but with cooking in general. We fiddle too much, we're seeing it. Let them sit, let them sit. I actually have a few videos coming out on the particulars of a perfect sauteed mushroom. And the number one most important rule is to get let them cook. You're expecting them to have a beautiful golden crust on them, but you won't let them sit in the pan and develop that golden crust. You've got to let them get nice and golden crust. You can get that with so many mushrooms, like oyster mushrooms, maybe not enoki mushrooms. I see people using enokis a lot. Enokis are really good in soups. I love, I love steamed enoki. I feel a little, um, if you put some uh, ginger tea in your steamer basket, so not water, so use tea. Uh, so use ginger tea in your steamer basket and you put mushrooms in your steamer basket. Mushrooms love to absorb, don't they, right? Like they really soak up that yummy flavor. So even um, for you, it might even be in, in your steamer basket, some vinegar too, really gets into those mushrooms in a really, really beautiful way. So I recommend that, especially if you like steamed veg, like if that's kind of your vibe. Um, use your imagination when it comes to cooking. Uh, I think that we are like, well, Saute. I saw someone do a recipe once where they threw the mushrooms in the pan, put water in the pan, put the lid on. It was like, what? Like, that is, why are we, it's, who told that to you that was the, it? that's bad. Oil, heat, don't fiddle with them is going to be your best bet. Um, I think advanced, portobellos I think are advanced just because if you don't do them right, it's, they're kind of terrible. And so I don't like to recommend those. So if you're thinking, if you're not a mushroom lover, don't reach for the port big, like big portobellos. Don't, because I feel like they are so easy to, you know what I'm saying? Like they're not, if they're yeah. not done right, they're really bad. It's like eggplant. It's like eggplant. Oh, or artichokes. Yes. If it's not right, it's bad. So, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like, I don't understand that it's, it's so simple. Oil, mushrooms, saute pan, roast in the oven. It's going to be delicious every single time. Now, advanced dehydration, come through. We love some dehydration. If you want some like lop, some lobster mushrooms that are dehydrated and you rehydrate them into some liquid, add a little bit of coconut aminos, a little soy sauce in there, some seaweed, you have the makings of some delicious kombu broth situation station that is scrumptious. So I think we need to look at uh, mushrooms, yes, you can eat them, but they can also be way, they can be big flavor builders. They can create umami and richness and depth when you, especially if you're opting for no meat, if you're trying to go no meat, then mushrooms are a great option for flavor building. Really, really great option. I can see why you have your own show. I, <laughs> I book you. I... <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot, but you know, I don't know. I just feel like 
using your imagination, you know, is just the the best thing I can think uh, when when going in to cook. I, I, going about things in a problem solving way too. People let that stop them. Ugh. Last time I did mushrooms, they were really soggy. So I don't like mushrooms. I'm like, no, what you've just displayed to me is a problem. Let's create a solution. Because mm -hmm. why do you, like, just because you made them and they were soggy doesn't mean like mushrooms are soggy. It just means you don't know how to make them. It's a you problem, not a mushroom problem. <laughs> I, I'm just picturing you talking in that deep voice filter oh. that you do on Instagram. Yeah. That kills me every single time. I, like, please never stop. We love a little bit of food humor. No, listen, if it's not fun, like, what are we doing? Like, that's the thing, too. We take everything way too seriously. This is food. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, are, when we have it, we're so lucky to have it. So let's, like, have fun with it and, and make it fun. Mm -hmm. You know? It's, like, also, too, this, um, you know what to saying, right? You know what a saying is, right? Say it again. It's okay. A saying. T-I-S-A-N-E. So a tea, no. a tea has tea leaves in it. A tisane is a blend that has dried berries and nuts and herbs, but it doesn't actually have any tea leaves in it, so it doesn't have mm. any caffeine in it. So one of my favorite things is some dried goji berries with some dried porcini mushrooms. I know, to hear me out, I know this is like, what is she talking about? With some uh, cinnamon sticks, um, some star anise, some cardamom, and you let that just do its thing in a pot on the, on the stove, and you just have the most interesting cooking liquid. It is its own Whoa. kind of tisane, wonderful broth. And then you steep some ramen noodles in that. So the noodles wow. will soak up the flavor of this broth. And now you can use those noodles in a stir fry or use them however you want to use them. You know, like, I, I think it's it's like, what, what could I possibly make with this? And really letting your mind go big. You know, like who says that when you make rice, you got to use water, you know, why not use a little bit of mushroom broth that you make from scratch? And who says that mushroom broth you make from scratch, there's even a recipe written for it already. You know, you can create one yourself, you know, so that is what I'm trying to have people do. Like use your imagination, have a lot more fun and look at food at solution based thinking, more like problem solving and less like at last time I did it, it was horrible. It's probably your fault. Eh. <laughs> So, you know, that means you messed up and so you are human and we will learn and you'll do better next time. <laughs> you know, it's not That's the food's so fault. Yeah, we do live in a privileged time. I mean, most of us mm -hmm. have access to more than just salt and pepper. Yes. How many spices do we have? Like 30? Amazing. Yeah, and exactly. just any food that we could think of right down the street, right? It. Yeah. It's incredible. And, and it's a pro and a con to what you were saying before is that we're mm -hmm. closer to a wider variety of foods, but far away from the farmer. And yes. so how do, how do we get creative and diverse with our eating, but also connect to the whole life cycle of, of, of yeah, there, that's a cool piece of nature right in front of you. And I would love to know the life cycle of how that grew. And, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's the coolest thing ever. I also think even with my show, and we mentioned it briefly, but this idea of supply chain, right? This idea, I don't like to call it supply chain. It's, it's, um, I interviewed this, uh, this Yemeni coffee farmer. It's really, um, and he had this term that he really liked called value chain. And I thought, oh, wow, that's so great. You know, 60% of the food that we eat here in America comes from somewhere else. Right. And so already we're disconnected, right? Like, what does that mean? And when we talk about eating locally and, and we make it like it's an easy thing, I don't ever want for people to misunderstand me. It is not easy. I mean, eating locally, like, uh, I guess that means coffee's out because <laughs> there's no coffee right. cherries. There's no coffee cherries grown in Kansas. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, it's, it's, you know, like, I think that this is hard, right? Like olive oil, like short of California, it's not, it's just not a lot of olive oil going on here in America. You know, it's. That is the same story for so many spices and so many things specialty wise that we eat, you know, particularly even, even, uh, I mean, vegans, I mean, let me look at, um, someone, I used to be a vegan. I was vegan for a really long time, but understanding that a lot of your food you're getting from somewhere else, avocados from Mexico, right. quinoa from Peru, the story goes on and on and on. And so this idea of mushrooms is so fascinating to me because they do exist everywhere. They really do. Right. And they are everywhere. And that is, a uh, it's, it's one of the few things that I can think, and the only kingdom that I can think that exists everywhere, everywhere, all the time. 
And so, I mean, you can go into, I mean, Black, do you guys know Black Forager, Alexis? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course you do. She's amazing. She's remarkable. I had to have her on the show. So, uh, I mean, this girl finds everything you could possibly imagine like a mile from her house. You know what I mean? And so uh, people like this also are so important for me to center. Like, again, nothing's about me. Like, as a, I call myself that sort of like story steward. Um, but if I can find a way as a voice to center these important things that some might consider very... Uh, someone once told me that my love for mushrooms and how mushrooms are very kind of granular and very kind of like over in their own corner. And I was like, ma'am, mushrooms are... <laughs> I was like, mushrooms are center stage. Excuse me, what? <laughs> you know, like, I just want to let everybody know mushrooms are here. They're, they are the 2020 forever. 2020, 2021, they are the winner. They are here forever. And centering people who are experts in that field are, in, are how we dismantle the weird feelings about fungi, right? And the, because it's not, I'm, I can't do it alone. You know what I yeah. mean? I can't do and, it alone. And most of the time, those people that have those weird feelings are eating a piece of bread or, you know, drinking beer. You know, the yeast is just in everything that they eat, yeah. let alone they share over 50% of their DNA with fungi and they have probably hundreds and, or if not thousands of different species of fungi in or on their body. But... Yeah. It, it shows up in so many ways. You know, if you eat any vegetable, any plant, right, it needs fungi to survive, either mycorrhizal connecting yes. to the roots or endophytic fungi in the cell in walls the cells, of plants. Yeah. And, you know, even spearmint, the smell of spearmint is because of a fungi inside the cell wall of spearmint. And so we're starting to discover all these different spices and plants and functional foods that make these compounds only because there's a fungi in it. And the second you take it out, uh, it no longer has that smell or that yes. um, taste or that compound that we like that's that's beneficial, you know. So um, they are center stage. And I always think they're, they're kind of humble stewards of our earth, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of times they don't like to be in the spotlight. And yep. They do the work and they're like, I don't have to take credit, right? Uh, but if you want to shout me out, you know, go for it and I'll work with you and I'll love you and, and we can build this beautiful relationship. But they're underground, they're in trees, they're, you know, they're, they're hiding a lot of times and they'll, they'll poke up and tease you with this beautiful fruit, oh. but they're, they're just kind of this mysterious and, and they tease you, right? And, and once they get you into their world, it's like, wow it this is never ending and so I remarkable i mean i'm tethered for life i mean it's just like i'm connected forever and i think you know also it's breaking this breaking the stigma around mushrooms too it was like psilocybin magic mushrooms like by the way i'm from florida we've had <clears throat> an incredible relationship with magic mushrooms me and golden teachers we went through a hat we had a whole vibe in my early 20s, we had a really like tight relationship. Um, and, but it's also like, I just want people to know, like, that's a thing if you want it to be a thing. Like microdosing, like, let's hang out there if you want to hang out there. If not, like, let's just, let's just have life and death conversation. If not, let's just like grow our own food, right? Like, what is your vibe here? Like, we can find something that is going to support the support of fungi, right? We, you just let me know what your situation is, right? There, there's, there, there's a story for everybody. You know, I, I, I think psilocybin is a very important conversation, hugely important. And that research is something that I am heavily invested in, even monetarily, fiscally invested in, because I do believe in, I believe in the power of fungi in, in every single way, but most notably for humans, I believe in that power, whether we're talking about climate change or biologically or, or our mind, mentally, et cetera. Um, but I, I do want to, I have to have that conversation because there are so many people that are like, ooh, psilocybin, ooh, that's weird. You know, like they have weird feelings about it. And I'm like, okay, but chicken of the woods, yum. You know, <laughs> like, you know, like, 
<laughs> yeah, shiitake, back to the, we can grow monologue, like, right? Like, I mean, I think it was uh, uh, ancient civilizations or they found, I mean, I think they found that one of the oldest, um, one of the oldest bodies, skeletons, excuse me. That's the red lady. The, ra the red lady. Yeah. In yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Yes, on the teeth, spores on the teeth. And so, okay, I mean, that's pretty alien-like. Like, that's amazing. And sometimes that conversation really gets people into it. Sometimes I, I'm speaking about um, fungi and I meet someone else who's, like, really geeked out on the alien vibes, like, spores on the teeth. Whoa, that's in amazing, like, from another planet. And then other times I'm just speaking to a mom that has hungry kids and she's just trying to get her kids to eat mushrooms. You know what I mean? So it just runs the gamut. It just depends. At the end of it all, I am a chef. So cooking, mushrooms, that's bread and butter for me. Thank you for shape-shifting for people. That's productive. And you have a pretty decent following, and you're using that platform. Thank you from us, from the mushrooms, for doing that. Uh, it's making course. a difference. I have friends who follow you and what, like sent me a... <laughs> something that you posted and they were like you've been saying mushrooms are cool but they really see. are they really really are and it's and i don't feel like it's like a sellout or anything you know like season two we're going to talk more we're going to there's going to be more and you know what so you guys want to know something very funny i had to really push for that mushroom episode really i had to push for it i it, it was not easy because a lot of them are sort of focused around the country right or yeah. and it was like if we don't if if we don't do this mushroom episode I can't do like it won't I it's I have to do it and of course it ended up being like one of everyone's like sort of favorite episodes and uh also was probably the only rep the episode that really inspired people to grow kits uh, small hold right like just so, I mean so many great 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 mushroom stories and really got people super active and super excited so my goal is to get people just as excited um I mean, we're in America domestically. We're going into like more humid weather. Come through, like I'm ready. Like I want to see more mushroom excitement. So, stay tuned. <laughs> okay, so the last question is: If mushrooms had the microphone, it could say one thing to the whole human race. What do you think they would say? Okay, um, relax. You're worthy of ease, just like we are, and. Remember, you need your neighbor more than you think you do. That's that's what I would say. Yeah, that's what they would say. I think. Yeah, very in in some kind of like, in some kind of Morgan Freeman voice. <laughs> of course, <laughs> some kind of like wouldn't be the same so, without it. No, <laughs> some kind of voice of God from the small the small flower of this mushroom with this big booming. Kind of, you know, oh, uh, you yeah. know, James Earl Jones voice, like Darth Vader. Could you imagine? <gasps> Maybe that, you know, like a Darth Vader voice, like this <laughs> Enoki yeah. mushroom. <laughs> so. yeah, but... Oh man, you know, big voice, little thing. Where can people follow your work? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's a million places, but any <laughs> any main places that people can catch up with you and see your recipes, your show. Yeah, well, they can watch my show, Vice. Every Saturday is a new episode. There's uh, lots of episodes, 24 of them. So every Saturday you can watch a new one. Um, you can also watch them. Some of them are on YouTube as well. The show is called Counter Space. I am the host of it. Not every show is about mushrooms, unfortunately, but they all are about very important, important issues that uh, we that I think at now, at 2021, we can all kind of relate to. Um, or on my Instagram, uh, Sophia underscore row, where I talk about basically everything. Sometimes it's my hair, sometimes it's food, sometimes it's me talking shit about food. You just never know. You never know on my Instagram. But it's, it's, it's mushrooms at least three, four times a week. At the very, at the minimum, minimum. Mm -hmm. Everything will be in the show notes. Sophia, thank you so much for coming on the show. We had a great time and keep up the amazing work. Keep changing the world. And thanks everyone for tuning in and streaming in um, wherever you are in the world. We love you so much. Sending a big virtual hug wherever you're tuning in from, um, whether you're watching or just listening. Uh, we love you so much. And please also you keep having that childlike curiosity 
about mushrooms and fungi and everything natural and beautiful about this world, um, head over to our site, mushroomrevival.com. Ton of blogs, ton of podcasts, whole line of functional mushroom products. And as always, much love and may the spores be with you. I love it. You guys are the best. You're the best. <laughs> the best. May the spores be with you. That's why my little Darth hit. I had to, uh, had to get in there with a the little Darth humor. <laughs>